Hello there. Today I'm going to explain how to use OpenID Connect authorization code flow with Keyclock. I will begin by talking about when to use authorization code flow and how it works. After that, I will move on to the implementation of authorization code flow using Keyclock. Let's begin. After connecting an application with an identity product like Keyclock using OpenID Connect protocol, our goal is to receive an ID token and Optionally, an access token and a refresh token from the identity provider whenever a user signs into the application. OpenID Connect provides different flows based on the use case to obtain these tokens. The authorization code flow is a redirection based implementation used to secure server side web applications, including those built with Spring Boot, Node.js, and PHP. This is how the authorization code flow is implemented. As the first step, user initiate the login flow by hitting the login endpoint of the server side application, which is called the client. Whenever user hit the login endpoint, client redirects the user to the identity provider. This redirection request is sent to a special URL called authorization URL. And this request contains important parameters. The first one is client ID. This is used to identify the server side application. An identity provider secure multiple client applications because of that client should have an ID to be identified by the identity provider. And then there's an optional parameter redirect URL. Upon successful authentication, user will be redirected to this product redirect URL. Then response type, which is set to code since we are using authorization code flow. And then we put a scope. A scope can control what kind of attributes should be in the access and ID tokens received to the server side application ultimately. Default scope is set to open ID. In addition to that, you can configure multiple scopes in the identity provider. Multiple default scopes are also accepted. Once the user is redirected to the identity provider, it will check whether there's a valid session for this particular user. If there ex exists no valid session, in that case, Keyclock will prompt a login form where user has to provide his username and password to successfully authenticate against the identity provider. Once the authentication is successful, Keyclock will redirect again the user to the server side application using the product redirect URI, or if redirect URI is not provided, can be configured in the Keyclock client configurations. I will show that in a short while. Uh, this redirection contains an important request parameter called code. This is the authorization code that will be provided by the Keyclock server to the server side application. Once this code is received to the server side application, it will extract that value from the URL and server side application will make a direct request to the Keyclock identity provider. This request contain few important parameters such as grant type which is set to authorization code, again client ID and a client secret is also added. Client secret is intended to authenticate this server side application from Keyclock level. And we set another parameter named code. Its value will be the authorization code captured from the previous redirection. And another parameter named redirect URI is set, which is the same redirect URI we set before. As the response for this token request, all the tokens will be received to the server side application. There will be ID token, access token, and uh, optionally a refresh token as well. Refresh tokens are used to renew access and ID tokens when they are about to expire. And that's all with theory. Now I'm going to show you how to implement this flow using Keyclock. As the server side client application, I'm using a simple Node.js application built using ExpressJS framework. Let's begin with Keyclock configuration. Here you can see now I'm in the admin console. Currently my Keyclock local instance is running on localhost port 8080. First, we have to create a client to represent the server side application. Therefore, I visit the client section. Here, click on create client and I set the client name as OIDC client and click next. Here, enable the client authentication. Once client authentication is enabled, this client becomes a private client and a secret value is generated for this particular client. Here, I keep the standard flow enabled. This corresponds to the authorization code flow and I disable the direct access grant. And I click next and here I need to put a valid redirect URI. This should be the redirect URI that will be used by Keyclock to redirect the user back to the server side application upon successful authentication. I put the redirect URI as localhost 3000. So my uh, server side application will be running 
on local sport 3000 and I have created an endpoint named callback. I will show this endpoint in a short while. Or you can add uh, wildcards as well if you prefer. But I recommend to use specific values as much as possible. And then I save this client. Now the client is created successfully. Client ID is open ID connect client. This is the valid redirect URL we will be using. And here the web origin is automatically generated. Here under the credentials tab, we can see or oh, copy the client secret value. We will need this value to configure our server side application. Now we are done with the client configurations. Now I am going to create a user. Now I am in the users section. I click on add user. Here I create a new user named Tom and click create. Use is created. Now I am going to set a password for this user. I go to the credentials tab and click on set password. Uh, I create password is test. Uh, disable temporary switch and save the password. Okay, now our client is created and a new user is created with the password. Now we are totally done with the key clock level configurations. Now I'm visiting the ExpressJS application. Uh, before moving to the ExpressJS application, I want to uh, show you another important thing. Uh, in this real settings, by visiting the endpoint section, here you can see this open ID endpoint configuration section. Once I visited that section, open ID well known configurations are loaded. Whenever a user hit the login endpoint of the backend application, he will be redirected to this authorization endpoint. So here you can get that value. And uh, once the authorization code is received to the server side application, it will be using this token request to fetch all the tokens ID token, access token, and refresh token. In our demonstration, we will be using these two URLs authorization endpoint and token endpoint. Okay, now I'm in my Express.js project. Here you can see we have only two files package.json file and Express.js file. I will start from the package.json file. Here we declare our dependencies here you can see i have added only two dependencies as axios and express express dependencies added as the framework axios is an http client library which is used to make http requests that's it with the package.json file now i'm moving to the express.js file this is also a very small file here i have imported both express and axios dependencies and i have created the express app here here's the configuration json object here you can see the client ID is the ID of the client we just created a while ago. And this is the secret of that client. I showed you how to get this client secret by visiting the credentials tab. My Keyclock Realm is master. On this URL, my Keyclock service running. And this is the redirect URI. Uh, this is the login endpoint. So this is used to initiate the login flow. Here you can see I have composed this authorization URL with the requested parameters. This is the authorization URL I showed you before. And here we set the client ID, response type as code, redirect URI, and scope as open ID. Once this is created, I redirect the user to this particular URL. And this is the callback URL. Upon successful user authentication, Keyclock will redirect the user to this URL. As I mentioned earlier, once this URL is hit, I'm going to extract the request parameter named code from here. Once the authorization code is captured, I am directly calling the Keyclock server using the Axios HTTP client. I am making a post request here. Uh, this is the token URL I showed you before. These are the parameters of the token URL. This is the grant type. It is set to authorization code. And uh, this is the client ID. And also I have set the client secret. And this is the captured authorization code from the previous redirection. And this is the redirect URI. Uh, the content type is application xww form url encoded as the response for this request we get all the tokens and i am going to show all those received tokens in the web browser here you can see i have exposed this application on port 3000 yeah that's it with this code let's move on to the demonstration you can run this express.js application by using the command node express.js you should have node.js installed in your local machine now my keyclock server is running on local host port 8080 and the express.js application is running on local host port 3000 now i'm visiting the login url of the express.js application to initiate the login flow uh, before hitting the enter button i would like to open the network panel okay now i hit login 
So once I hit the login endpoint, I was redirected back to the K clock server. If I would inspect this login request I just sent to the server side application, here you can see I have been redirected to the K clock application. Here we can see all the information added. This is the authorization URL and the client ID is there, response type, redirect URI, scope, and everything is added to this particular URL. And I have been redirected to the key clock login page. Now I'm going to print the credentials of newly created user Tom and password is test and I hit on sign in button. Once I click the sign in button, I was redirected back to the callback URL of the server side client application. Uh, here you can see that particular request. Yeah. So here you can see I have been again redirected to the server side application once I successfully authenticated against the key clock server. Here you can see the authorization code is added. There's an special value name session state which is used for security purposes. I'm not going to cover that here. And here you can see the access token and ID token and also the refresh token. As I mentioned earlier, the refresh, refresh token is used to refresh access and ID tokens when they're about to expire. And here uh, all the expiration times are there. Refresh token will expire in 1800 seconds. That means 30 minutes. And the access token will expire in uh, one minute. So we, we can adjust these expiration times in client configurations section. Uh, now at this point of time, server side application is totally aware about the user who logged into the application with the support of the ID token. If I would inspect the ID token, ID token contains the details of the user. Yeah, here you can see preferred username is Tom. This is the user created a while ago. An issue is the master realm client is open and connect client. All those details are here. So now server side application is fully aware about this user. And also here you can see the scope section. Uh, here we only requested open ID, but profile and email scopes are also added. It is because profile and email, those are also configured in KCLOCK as default scopes. Therefore, even though we did not request, those scopes are added to the token. And I hope you get a clear understanding about how to implement authorization code flow using KCLOCK. If you have any question, Please put it as a comment. Thank you.